So we're here at the SID Display Weekend. Who are you? Hi, I'm Jeff Urich. I'm the Director of uh, Marketing at Nanosys. And uh, Nanosys is doing uh, Quantum Dot? We are the Quantum Dot Company, yeah. The Absolutely. Quantum Dot The company. Quantum Dot Company, yeah. How is that possible? Well, we, we're really the first company to focus on Quantum Dot since our founding in, in 2001. And uh, we believe we have the largest uh, manufacturing capacity installed for, for Quantum Dot technology today. 2001 is a long time ago. It's a long time ago. Because everybody's talking about quantum dot, but more like recently, right? Right. Like the last couple of years, maybe. Yeah, well, it's a brand new material. And so uh, it takes a lot of work to bring a brand new material, a nano material that we manufacture uh, and, and bring it to market, take it out of the lab and bring it to market at, at this uh, uh, mass production scale. Were you the company since 2001? I've been at the company since 2009. That's pretty long still, right? Pretty long time, yeah. And what were you thinking all this time? Well, it's been a really exciting ride. I mean, when I, when I joined, we we're, st we're still really at the lab scale. And uh, it's been awesome to watch this technology grow, you know, over the last uh, few years. Since our first product was launched in 2013, um, you know, we were out here talking about color. We were at SID saying, hey, wide color gamut matters. So 9, 10, 11, all this? Yeah. And, you know, the industry was saying, I don't know, we're all very focused on resolution back at that time, right? And now you see the whole industry is very interested in high dynamic range, uh, high peak luminance, uh, you know, good contrast ratio, it's uh, even more wide color gamut. The resolution. It's more important. And, and, and so finally we see the industry really, really uh, understanding our message and, and, and adopting the technology very broadly. Well, maybe people have reached 4K and they're thinking, that's great. Now we need to focus on color. Maybe so. Yeah. Uh, we think 8K is, is 8K is great too. 8K uh, is fantastic, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, so, um, so right here you, you're comparing uh, so the the awesome and many many people in stores, you know, yeah, like the salespeople in the stores, they often tell the customer this is the best you can get. Is the OLED? That's what they usually say, sure. kind of. But actually, uh, the Quantum Dot LCD. I mean, LCD is amazing. It's always like uh, finding a way to be better. Or always something. finding a way to be better. You know, we're not really an LCD company. I think that's one of the one of the things maybe people don't understand about Nanosys. But uh, when, when we started to try to implement the quantum dot technology, we wanted to find the best way to get it into displays as soon as we could. And if you look at the, the TV industry, especially 99% of the capacity is for uh, a quantum dot. Or sorry, for, for LCD. LCD. 99. Right? 99%. The over 200 billion dollars of installed capex in the ground already right? there's a lot of billions in the OLED now a lot of billions but only really one factory five ten twenty billion or something right, right? still have to that's build. more than one percent of the 200 billion right I mean, yeah but it's one percent of the uh of the actual output of the capacity output uh oh. in terms of the the unit volume the quantities quantities that's right oh. so we we really think lcd if you want to address the mass market lcd is the way to do it today so we want to integrate our technology into the lcd display could you be in the oled too absolutely yeah we have some new uh demonstrations about that Put on the other side OLEDs. absolutely yeah it's a very exciting idea so uh, what's the quality difference between a Samsung QLED and a LG OLED? Right. And so like real. For real, real, for real, okay. Like so, the latest OLED, not the last year's, right? Right. So what we think is, uh, um, what we're highlighting here is really two very, we think, premium display technologies. The OLED is actually, we think, a really beautiful display. Uh, we love OLED too. Um, and you'll see the OLED has some advantages, right? It has an awesome black level because you can turn the pixel off. Has great viewing angle. That's why I'm trying to keep you in the center here, right? Um, yeah, uh, really fast refresh rate, uh, stuff like that. But Let's go on the side. There's okay. a few. <laughs> sure, okay. I think I think they both. We're look, not hiding anything here. Like, they both look pretty good on the side, but I, I mean the OLED has, is better on the sides. So it's a little right? bit better on the side, right? But the viewing angle of LCD has really improved a lot too. So if you're like 40 people in the living room watching the TV, right? Then the OLED might have better viewing angles. Right. If you have a super wide couch, you have 40 people in there. If you have a really dim room, the OLED looks really nice. But for most consumers, we find have a relatively bright living room. And so the extra peak luminance, the extra color saturation that the quantum dot technology enables is really useful for most consumers. You have to remember contrast ratio is not, in reality, effective contrast ratio is not measured in a pitch black room, right? You always have some light, even if it's the light coming out of the display and reflecting back off of your wall. So what we think of effective contrast ratio, it's the peak luminance divided by the, reflect, the, the reflected ambient plus the black level. So yes, the OLED may have a zero black level, but you always have some reflected ambient light. In fact, both of these TVs have very similar reflectivity. So, uh, especially- Is it most glossy? Like uh, it's like a mirror a little bit or? Right. 
Right. But they have a special anti-reflective coating. You see your lights coming here, and you're not a really bit. getting a spotlight uh, reflecting back at you. But is there anything about this reflectance being better in the dark, or not really? Oh, I, I think both have similar, uh, similar reflectivity performance. Um, both, both companies, I'm sure, will claim they have their own special uh, sauce, and I'm sure they, they have some unique advantages. Um, but when the reflectivity is the same, the peak luminance is the most important driver of the of the uh, of the effective contrast ratio. So how is the, how does your quantum dot help with the peak luminance? So quantum dots are super efficient. This technology uses a cadmium-free quantum dot technology. Today, the cadmium-free technology is well over 90% efficient at, at down converting uh, blue light into red and green. So it's really, really efficient. The other key thing to remember is quantum dots produce these very narrow peaks of red and green. We can show you that on the other uh, side of the booth. And so because both of these displays rely on color filters, it's important to optimize the light so that it goes through the color filter as efficiently as possible. The OLED TV makes a white light in the backlight, just like the Quantum Dot TV. It's a blue plus a yellow. And the color filters have to work very hard to produce a saturated green and a saturated red. The Quantum Dot TV, we're able to make pure red, green, and blue, and then pass that through the color filter very efficiently so that most of the light that you make makes it to your eye. Um, so that's a key difference. Is there a way that they're going to get much brighter over there in the OLEDs? We haven't seen it. Um, if you, and if how you, would they do that? Uh, it's, they have to improve the, the lifetime and the, and the stability of the materials because it becomes harder for them to drive more and more current into those pixels to make them brighter. You notice year over year they haven't really improved the, the brightness of the OLED materials. Right here, just because you've been running it a long time, I'm just going to check those things because it looks like there's a little bit of a, kind of like a burn-in. But uh, yeah, you might be seeing some some image sticking. Uh, you know, we've been running this content for for is the that duration one of the show. One issues with OLED. Yeah, certainly any emissive technology. Um, you know, when you have the pixel emitter at the front of the display, you're going to run into uh, some variability and, and, and some kind and, of and you image been sticking. Cheating, or right? You've been running them as long time both, and this one doesn't have the burn-ins or. At this all. TV doesn't. Yeah, and one of the things Samsung's been talking about, they have a 10-year no burn-in uh, warranty. So for LCD displays, the burn-in is really not an issue at all. So it's definitely uh, it's definitely something to consider when you look at an OLED. But then you can pick pixel refresh. Sure. But then what happens if you do that? Well, I think you could. And so, to be honest, we haven't run the pixel refresher, and and certainly you could do that. And and, and I think if we do, we'll find that the image returns to a, a, a very perfect, clean state. Um, but at the, uh, in the long run, um, there's only so much of that you can do. But course. does the pixel refresh lower the br in brightness or something? Um, I'm not does exactly sure. I don't want to comment too much on the details of what that does because it's not my technology yeah. and, and, I, and I, don't, uh, I don't know. But uh, you can imagine you have to change uh, the calibration of the pixels. And so there's only so far you can take that over, over okay. a long period of time. All right. But I mean, those are pretty awesome. And if I had one of these in my home, I'd be pretty happy. But this is—it's fantastic what's going on with your yeah. with your quantum dot. But it, uh, yeah, can honestly, we check? You'd be happy with both. They're, they're both they're premium, awful. great TVs. Yeah, can you explain how, how it works? Yeah. So, this, so what's your product? This is our product right here at Nanosys. This is what we make. These are vials of red and green quantum dot uh, materials. And if I lift this up, it's going to be really bright for your camera. But you see here, we've got blue LEDs uh, underneath the uh, quantum dot materials. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, uh, the quantum dots are down converting that blue light into red and green. The quantum dots themselves are nanomaterials, they're a nanoscale semiconductor. Um, Nano, it's like look like a looks like a weird colored liquid. It does look like a weird colored is that liquid. What it is? Inside this vial, there are trillions and trillions of these nanoscale semiconductors. They're two to eight nanometers in diameter. Semiconductors. Semiconductors. They're any energy converters. They're they're. Um, Two to eight nanometers in, in diameter. They're um, a little bigger than a water molecule in the size range of, so, of a, something like a strand of DNA. One ten thousandth the, the strand of a, uh, width of a strand of human hair. So however you want to think about it. Incredibly small. And each crystal um, has this unique property. Depending on the size of the crystal, it emits a different color of light. So the larger crystals emit red light, light long wavelength light. Smaller crystals emit uh, short wavelength light, green or blue. Where are you based? Based in Silicon Valley, Milpitas, California. And that's where you 
you, you, you thought of this and you invented all this? Or no? uh, well, no, the, the original uh, inventions come out of uh, UC Berkeley, uh, MIT. The company was founded in 2001. Was that in the 90, 80s? Uh, well, the, the technology was discovered by a guy named Lou Bruce in the early 1980s, working at Bell Labs. Um, his uh, uh, grad students working for him, guys like Munji Buendi and, and Dr. Paul Alvisados, who is our co founder. Um, Are they all here? They're all not all here. Those guys are, are uh, uh, work in universities now and, and, and actually work with us sometimes too. And so, uh, U.S. invention. U.S. You're invention. US company. U.S. manufactured. We do all of our this? manufacturing. It's a it's a, um, a solution process. It's a liquid uh, 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 chemistry growth. It looks a lot like a, a microbrewer. You've got big steel tanks. Um, and uh, we ship this material in, in big kegs and out, out to uh, our suppliers. It's like making beer. It's a, lot, it's a lot like making beer, yeah. So that's why the U.S. is up to doing this, right? That's why. It's something we're very the good micro at. Keg, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, microbrewery, Northern California microbreweries, we've got a lot of that expertise. So, <laughs> so what else yeah. are you showing around here? <clears throat> so we're showing how, this is the, this is the, these are the materials here. Yes, when we were founded in 2001, we could make these great uh, glowing vials of materials. You go to a, yeah, you go to a display maker with these vials and they say, well, that's great. You know, you can make these colors. What do we do with that? So we... we a bunch of years. It took a bunch of years, and we, and, and we went to them and we wanted to understand, well, how are LCDs made? How can we integrate our technology into LCDs? So we, we figured out that we could make this plastic film, and we take the quantum dots, the red and the green quantum dots, and we coat them onto this plastic film. So you can see it's a... This sheet. one has it or not? This has it, yeah. And yeah. what you'll see is we take a blue LED, so we take that short wavelength light, and we mix it with the red and green quantum dots in the film, and we're able to make a white light with the quantum dots. So that's what so the, the aim is to get white. The aim is to get white, but to get a very specific, very pure white with a very specific spectral response. I'm going to do a, spe a measurement for you here. And you can see that we've got inside the spectrum here very clean peaks of red, green, and blue coming from the quantum dots and then the blue from the from the uh, uh, blue LED, of course. So, so this is inside. The goal just to do white, and then there's a color filter? And then the color filters. But because we have those separated peaks, the color filters don't have to work so hard. So we can be brighter, and we can have very pure, very accurate colors. So if I measure the front of the display, you see you've got very similar peaks of red, so, green, and blue. So what that, does that mean, those peaks, compared to other ways Compared of doing to other technologies? So if, if I have, so hopefully my batteries work, it yep. would be just this whatever final spectrum right here is a... Uh, from a white LED backlight. So we think of an LED TV. This is the spectrum that you have in the backlight of a TV, right? So you've got a blue peak, same blue LED, and then you've got this yellow, uh, 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 broad yellow peak, which is coming from this yellow phosphor on top of the LED. So the, this yellow doesn't make it through to the front of the screen. You don't have a, a yellow pixel on most uh, LCDs, right? So what you're doing is filtering this light to remove the uh, yellow and show you red. So if I show you a red on an LED TV, that's the spectrum that you get you get this tail going off from orange out into infrared. But if you look at a quantum dot red, and you filter the green and the blue out, you've got this nice, pure peak of solid red. Color separation. Right. So color separation, be, really pure But it's white. So, so yeah. where it's not. Right. It's white, but it's made up of red, green, and blue light. Yeah, narrow spectral uh, peaks. And uh, what else are you showing over there? So, well, this is our tr traditional film. We're showing a new version of the technology. We call this, uh, this is the cadmium-based film that people are, are familiar with. Which is uh, not good uh, for the environment? Exactly. So, what we're, one of our big messages at the show is that we don't need cadmium anymore. We're so moving away. So, the before was cadmium? 100% cadmium free. Free already. So, yes, on already. On the market. And Since when? So, oh, since uh, 2015, I believe. Oh, so already it's three, already. three years. Yes. Quantum.TVs have no issues with right. the pollution. Right, exactly. exactly. Yeah? And so we're showing two different, two more things here. We have a, this is our Hyperion film. Then you might not need this it is a, a new specialized film that has a very low amount of cadmium in it. And it has a very narrow peak in the green, as you see here, right? And so we still make some of this material because there are some applications where you want a really specialized narrow peak. Um, but, but I mean, the TV that was there was zero cadmium. Zero this cadmium. has a little bit. This this, um, this film does here, and uh, this film so has zero many cadmium. It's one hundred percent cadmium free. So oh. Nanosys makes all three material sets. We, all three are in the market. Um, but the dominant thing for us by far is one hundred percent cadmium free. In what, fact, how bad? What's bad about cadmium? 
Um, cadmium is regulated by the European Union and the, uh, the Rojas regulations you might have heard about, restriction on hazardous substances. They limit the amount of cadmium uh, that you can have in consumer electronics to 100 parts per million. So that's what our Hyperion uh, system is. Because it's, it's bad for the water systems? or um, It's, it's, uh, it's just a, a, a known uh, uh, toxic substance that the EU... You've been uh, touching that cadmium thing the whole day. Oh, it's, yeah, it's very safe, actually. I didn't say it, but yes. it's not. <laughs> it's safe, but what you don't want to have is a lot of it end up in the environment and the water supply and things like this. But we've actually been able to prove that uh, that the cadmium materials are safe and that they don't actually leach right. out of the yeah. out of the displays right. over over yeah. time. And uh, what are you so showing over there? there are some situations so 100 percent of our roadmap starting from here. So today, as I said, we do the uh, you can afford uh, a little the, uh, low cadmium and the 100 percent cadmium free in the right. films. So Moving forward, uh, with every single thing we do is 100 percent cadmium free. So our entire roadmap is. 100% cadmium free. So what are so, those demos about? What are these demos about? These are the next generation of the technology. So uh, we're moving from films that sit on top of the light guide plate, like you see here, to uh, to moving to the front of the display. So what you see here are printed and patterned quantum dots. If you're zooming in on there, that is a, a photolithography patterned uh, quantum dot. Uh, uh, color conversion layer. So we can integrate these kind of quantum dots with a blue OLED, with a blue micro LED, and even with an LCD, replace the color filters in an LCD with an emissive quantum dot layer. So we pattern the quantum dots. As you see in the film, we have a mix of red and green quantum dots uh, uh, coded on this film just at random. Now we're patterning the dots into uh, red and green sub pixels. So before you were just making a white and then letting other company, other technologies doing the color filtering. Yep. And now you're getting involved in the color filtering. Yes, no? the color conversion. It's not a passive filter. We're actually taking blue light and, and converting it into red and green. So it's a huge boost in efficiency for displays. So a color filter, even with a quantum dot backlight, uh, uh, a color filter and an LCD is very wasteful. Which is the one we see here. Right? Yeah, it and throws this away, and this one too. It throws away, and same with the OLED. The white OLED TVs have the color filter too. And the color filter, by design, wastes two thirds of the light. So, say you want to see a red, say you want to see this red at the front of the screen. You spend energy making white light in the backlight, and then you pass it through a filter that only allows one third of the light to come through, right? You only see the red light come through, but you've made, spent energy making blue and green in the backlight. 60% of the, 60 uh, disappears. So yes. If you, if you pulled the front of this display off, it, it's very bright, but you would be knocked out by how bright the backlight of these displays is. It's so, it's a waste of power. Yeah. So, uh, how much less power can you get? Into it, but uh, we have so much work. Well, we did it. We're doing a paper here at SID, um, and we so showed right that we could do, uh, in this case, 1.75 uh, was our, our, our uh, in our paper, 1.75 times. You could actually do more theoretically, um, up to over two two times uh, the efficiency. So um, it's it's a great great improvement for LCDs and for OLEDs and micro LEDs as well. Does that mean the next TVs are going to use less power, or they're going to be better in colors and everything, it's, or both? Both, maybe it's up to the display makers. Yeah, so, so it gives them a lot more headroom to work with, right? But you, you were saying this before that it started in 1991, and it's just Generally coming out right last now. three years, right? right. So if you're showing this now, does that mean we're only going to get it in, in 2045? <laughs> or when is it actually coming? No, well, it's not up to us because we're not the panel maker, we're not the display maker, we're the technology maker. Uh, our partner DIC here, we, we have a, a demonstration with them showing inkjet printed quantum so dots. So pretty much the only sampling this to, to had panel all makers cadmium now and the low now. cadmium. Uh, is so we think we could see this coming out right. in some the market people over the next one, two years. years. Really? Like just, in new TVs with this? Yeah, it's just up to the panel makers how they want to do it. Which technology do they want to go with first? Do we want to improve LCD? Do we actually want to say, no, no, you know, the blue OLED thing is very interesting. Let's focus there. Whichever the way the industry wants to go, Nanosys is very well positioned. So that's one of our big messages for the show. We're really the future platform technology for all of these display types. Right? We're getting better. This demo here is the uh, uh, kind of last step on our roadmap. This is an emissive quantum dot display. This is 100% cadmium free emissive, um, emissive pixels. So you're seeing blue, uh, green, and red. Uh, emissive pixels, very much like an OLED type of device structure, but with an inorganic, cadmium-free quantum dot as the emitter layer. So is that the next uh, step of, of quantum dot TVs, is the ones that are so emissive? Yes. Emissive. Yeah. There are some demos around, right? 
Some companies are doing some things with that. A few people have showed this. This is still a future technology. This is still much further out on the horizon. We've made awesome progress. At the show here, we announced we've done over 10% efficiency for all three colors. That's a big milestone for a uh, new emissive uh, emitter technology like this, but there's a long way to go in terms of the fine integration details, making it work within the, the manufacturing process and, and the, and, and the, uh, uh, the display. Um, but the really neat thing here, of course, it's an emissive display. It will have a great black level, great viewing angle, pure color from the quantum dots. But the real, real disruptive thing is the manufacturing process. So these are all made using solution processing. So you've probably heard about the emissive displays today. These are vapor deposition process, and that has to be done inside of a vacuum chamber. It's slow, it's very costly, and requires really, really high precision equipment. With quantum dots, we've never made a vapor de deposited emissive quantum dot pixel. 100% of it is, is a solution process. That means inkjet printing, transfer printing, like how you print a logo on a t-shirt, gravure printing, how you print a newspaper. Um, and uh, so quantum dots are gonna enable these kind of really low cost uh, printing technologies. OLED technology is working on printing, but they're, they've been moving from vapor to printing. We're starting from printing and really pushing that even further. So the future TVs are gonna be printed like a printer. Yeah. And uh, all ready with your... Yeah, well that's what we're showing here. So this is our current generation technology. Uh, and if you actually look, I don't know if you're gonna be able to capture it here, but if you look through the loop, you'll see a very fine uh, resolution printed, uh, yeah, you got it, uh, uh, quantum dots. So those are red and green quantum dots, and then the blue is just passing through from the backlight. So this is for use in a blue, with a blue OLED backplane, a micro LED backplane, LCD backplane again. But one of the th kind of through line of our, of our roadmap here is now we can pattern, now we can print these dots. Is that and the it's just a matter. What's that? This is patterning? This is patterning right this here. This is not in the Samsung QLED now, right? This is for the next gen. No, but what you're seeing is... This is for this? This is for th So this is photolithography patterned and this is inkjet patterned. You can do both. So photolithography has a couple of key advantages. It can go to very, very fine pixel size, uh, sub one micron uh, pixel. So if you want to do an AR, VR display with incredibly fine pixel resolution, this is the way to do it. Also, 100% of the uh, color filter manufacturing process today is using photolithography. So if we want to integrate with an LCD or even with an OLED, this is how the filters are made today. So we want to replace those filters using the same thing. Inkjet's going to enable you to do that with a lower cost, um, but it can only go down to 20 microns of pixels. 20 microns, very, very fine, very high resolution, um, but there's just a couple of differences there. So actually, that was 20 micron, this was? A sub one micron. Below right. one micron. So we need a quick measurement here, and you can see this is a quantum dot technology. Again, 100% cadmium-free quantum dots, uh, but now patterned onto onto the glass. Nice. I'd, I'd really like to get a. Do you have a quantum dot TV at home? Yeah, yeah of course. You, you got the right. Yeah. I'd really like to get one, but uh, Samsung, of course, is a beautiful quantum dot uh, displays, Love but there's guys. more and more companies doing this, right? There's more and more companies doing it all the time. Uh, Nanosys has now in the market, uh, of course, Samsung's our, our number one customer, top uh, investor in Nanosys, actually. Um, but we also have some other other technology, uh, other companies uh, pushing the technology, TCL, iSense, and of course, this brand new Vizio here. We're really excited to be showing this off. This is a pre-release demo. Uh, this is the Vizio P Quantum. They were nice enough to loan it to us. Um, you'll be seeing this in the market uh, this summer. Um, and it's a really, really gorgeous TV and a great example of our... Uh, so you got 98%. What does it mean, DCI-P3? DCI-P3 is the color gamut uh, standard that's used in uh, cinema by Hollywood. So it's a wider color gamut than the uh, typical HDTV broadcast. And, and you were mentioning TCL and Hisense. For example, the Hisense, uh, uh, they call it uh, ULED. Yes. That's you? Yes. That's their quantum dot? Uh, no, some, some ULEDs are, some ULEDs are not. Ah, it could be another company's quantum dot. Or no, 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 ah, it's, it's, it's us, but not 100% their ULED line is quantum dot. They have a ah. few that are not, so yeah. uh, you, you, have to, you have to look at the label more closely, but a number of their ULED panels are. And this is uh, going to be something around $2,000, right? This one, 65-inch? Yes, uh, Vizio, I believe, announced the pricing was $2,200. $2,200. Yeah. But just, to, just one last thing over here. Um, um, Sorry, jump in okay. Here. I, yeah. Uh, so these these materials right here, which is your your main product. Yes. Um, but uh, they are competitors, right? 
There are other companies talking about quantum dots. Uh, selling stuff like this? Uh, yeah, we, we don't see them in the market, but you certainly hear them talking about it and you can look ah, them up Ah, they're not online. in the market, so you're the, you're the only one? Yeah. All right, you probably yeah, we have uh, 60, we announced at the show, we have 61 SKUs in the market this year, so far this year. The 61 yeah. different TVs? Yes. Well, cool. Yeah. So, you know, Quantum Dots are making great progress, outshipping uh, OLED TV TVs today already, of course. Another interesting area is uh, the monitor, monitor market. So yeah. Samsung's announced a number of really awesome monitors. You may have seen a 49-inch monitor uh, oh. based on Quantum Dots. Uh, um, AUO is actually showing some great um, uh, Quantum Dot uh, products here. I saw um, Tianma had a beautiful one. Tianma's got a really gorgeous display. So yeah. there's, a, there's a lot of, uh, of buzz and a lot of interesting You can't technology. say exactly who's your customer and everything, but if you've got 61 Qs, that means uh, SKUs. There's a lot of There's things a lot. going on. There's a lot. Yes, and, we can't always confirm those and things. And how about, but, uh, you know, this is the 50-year anniversary of the LCD. Yeah. And uh, so did you speak with uh, some of these awesome guys that invented it and everything? Yes, yeah. Dr. Uh, Khan was here earlier checking out the checking out the uh, the VA panels we have here with LCD and, and uh, with quantum dots. And he was, I think he was pretty impressed. So it's And cool. they must be happy to see how uh, LCD keeps... <laughs> Getting yeah. all kinds of solutions to it stay keeps, ahead, right? It keeps innovating. You know, and, and one last kind of thought on that. You know, we, we talked about the film technology, um, and that's not the end of the road for LCD innovation for quantum dots. So you see over here, actually, at the uh, Samsung display booth, a new version of the technology. It's, uh, we call it QDOG, as for quantum dot on glass. And so instead of patterning, uh, okay, instead of uh, coding the dots onto uh, onto a uh, plastic light guide, now you're coding the dots onto a glass light guide plate. And okay. this enables you to have uh, a super, super thin uh, display. They both have this? These, yep. these displays, I both have it. So, you know, I can't, I can't comment too much for Samsung uh, about their specific demo of this type of technology, but I think you'll find that if you look at it from the side, because of the glass, you have a super, super thin, um, super, super thin display. It's a very large display, 65 inch TV. Really, 8K. really thin. Yeah. And the small one there? Right, small so, monitor, again, very thin, uh, but with the same great uh, color and brightness performance that you always expect. No, 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 uh, not, no less color, just the same right. as if you did a thicker one. Exactly, so it's a lower cost way to implement the quantum dot technology, um, and it looks awesome, and you get a thinner display, so it's a really, really cool new innovation for quantum so dots. So you, you're basically keeping busy all the time? Keeping busy all the time, yeah, there's and always something new happening. As you said, LCD continues to innovate continuously, right? So, yep. okay, you want to do thinner, you want to do great black level, we'll do full array local dimming, uh, you know, wider viewing angle, there's some new technologies to help you improve that. So. Um, LCD just continues to improve, and we're going to have LCD for a, for a very long time. Thanks a lot for yeah. keeping the LCDs around. How, how, how about Nanosys? How, how many people are in the company? Nanosys is uh, just over 100 employees now. Yeah. And are they mostly like working on future tech, like uh, like engineers and? Yep, we have a, we have a great uh, R and D staff. A bunch of our our team is here, uh, and of course uh, a, a great uh, manufacturing uh, crew as well. Yeah.